I built a sailor man, sailor the piper man, early in the morning, hearing the birds, catching the sunrise. Seven Ellie Pie. I'm smoking Irish whiskey. Made by uh, Peterson. I first, I first tasted it when it was made by Dunhill. How is it that you could justify yourself? Still making Dunhill pipe, so calling it white spot or blue spot, whatever they're calling it. How can you justify making pipes and not selling tobacco? I never understood that. I never understood that. Here, drinking some mighty black coffee. Mm. I just had one cup. I used to drink coffee like crazy when I was in the military. As a matter of fact, I learned to drink coffee in the military. Never used to touch the stuff. But in the military, you work all kinds of hours. Sometimes you, you do night ops, day ops, you know. Sometimes you work Saturday, Sunday. If I was to remember all the hours I worked, while in the military, all kind of strange hours. I think I, I put in for, for two human, two lifetimes, the amount of hours I worked in the military. You know, it's not, it's not like a nine to five, nine to, uh, ten to five. It's, you working, man. You got the best of me. As I said, the, my best years, when I was strongest, I was powerful, I gave it to my country, man. I'm sure a lot of you guys did. Go to one company or whatever. If you don't take care of yourself, you don't get to retire, man. And some of us, we're lucky if we retire. We're fortunate, not luck, fortunate. No. It was just amazing. I was around radiation, electrical equipment, and uh, never, never was sick like that. You know, cancer, anything like that. It's always been stuff that I, I ate. This is random thoughts. Stuff I ate hurt me more than anything in the atmosphere like I used to drink a lot of coke called kidney stones being, over, being overweight doesn't help any but you know I work out but not as much as I, I burnt out you know physically I'm like one of these athletes, plays 15, 20 years. Afterwards, you don't want to work out. And it feel good just to lie there. I still do like walking, hiking. On a good day, I love swimming. But the heavy sports, I used to do a lot of running. And I don't do that no more. I still play chess and checkers. You know, as a kid, checkers used to be so popular. I can do 50s and 60s. So popular. I remember living in Long Island, Long Beach, Long Island. I was around 10 years old. And outside, You know, it was broken up into neighborhood. We, we, we tend to live in a neighborhood that was Jewish, Italian, Hispanic, and black, African American. But when I used to venture off for some of my friends to visit them, they had what was called the Martha Luther Center that they built. 
in the uh, in the Afro American section. Now these are Afro Afro Americans that were upper working class, lower middle class, they could, could afford to buy a home in the sixties. And uh, they used to uh to gain to gain their votes. The city hall built a recreation center. Number one, get to keep the Africans Americans in their section, so they built the community in their section and they called it the Martha Luther. Wow, man. Let me tell you, when it came to having the best in, in uh, gear, athletics, at that time, the African Americans had boxing rings, like one of these Marty gyms, weightlifting facilities, facilities, outdoors, to have barbecues, everything. <laughs> So I used to go there for boxing. I used to box, you know, amateur. And then uh, in front, you know, these old men in their 70s, 65, 80, hardworking men, you know. Probably they were the first ones in, in their family to, I'm sure some of them were World War II veterans, career veterans. Were able to buy low, low income housing. So these checks would sit in the front. I mean, look at them. Some of them would have, you know, Navy, Marine Corps. But they, they're 60, 70. So I say, I would say they were World War II veterans. Maybe some of them were famous. I don't know. So they would have a, a store, like a country store, and in front of the country store. There was always two or three and, and other men that were already retired and had their pensions would hang around. Back then they used to drink Wrangle, Valentine beer. But it seemed the African Americans used to like that Colt 45 malt liquor. I never knew why. But those are the things that I saw. They drink Colt 45 malt liquor. And they had these chess, I mean, uh, checker uh, games. And they would sit there and they play checkers all day. I would come to school, I would go to school in the morning, catch the, the school bus. When I came back, they were still sitting there at 3 o'clock. <laughs> play chess. Really nice man. I remember I got there standing there and the man sat there. Wherever he was going to play, Hat and show up. He turns and asks me. He, I'm standing up like this, my hand against the side of a, the store. He goes, "Hey, buddy, you know how to play uh, checkers?" I said, "No, I've been coming. No, I don't know how to. I see that you guys. I know how to move the piece, but the intricate, strategic decision making. I, I had no idea. I didn't know the rules and stuff." And so, you know, to this day, I wonder, is that, I gotta search it, I gotta Google it. Who in the hell invented checkers? How old is checkers? I sat with the old man and played a couple of games before I left the school. I would come on Saturdays, hang out. Sometimes they let me play. But they got to know me. They used to call me Miguelito for Miguel Miguelito. You know? So, we're people like that, working class people. They're retired. I can say, in my life, I have more friendship with people older than me than my age group because they my age group yeah we used to ride these bikes I had a sting stingray uh, bike we all did at the time and mine was special because I had a sissy bar it was a uh, Schwinn I had the sissy bar and the pad in the back then I brought my mirrors 
Then I saw some old man with his, his was, he did his, he had a Cadillac. <laughs> yeah, Hardy Davidson. And uh, we, I used to see him back, I said, I went to the store, Little by save my money. I, I bought in the back to attach it to Sissy Bar. The arrows that go left or right, if I was making a left turn, I pressed the button and it said arrow. And my mother go, what are you going to do? You going to drive at night? <laughs> you know, I did once. You had Island Park, Oceanside, and had Long Beach City. And you know that um, the picture of the Godfather where... I think his name was Sonny, the son of Godfather, got trapped and got gunned down. Well, that bridge was the bridge to go into Long Beach City. Out, out of the, going out to uh, Kennedy Airport. He lived out there. For four um, years, four years, five years. What is this? Have beach boardwalk. The sun would come like this, and I'd be standing by the boardwalk. They had a amusement park, a lot like Ashbury Park, a lot like Atlantic City. Retired folks would go out there. Old Jewish retired people would go out there. Now you, it's beautiful. They had to redo it because of the storm that came through. But it was some fun times, man. On Saturdays, I would save my money once, about once a month. It seemed like that once a month. They had what was called playland. The skittle balls. They had these uh, these wooden balls. You threw it up like bowling, and then you had the arrow, the bow, and you had a different slot that the the ball. You had to try to get the center. And uh, my, my cousin was really good at that. I wasn't so good at that. But then after after you play, they give you tickets based on the score. If you had enough tickets, then you could buy whatever they had that you, you know. So we had a little bit of Coney Island. There was a place called Palisades. I don't know if any of you, I was able to get out Palisades. I believe it was in New Jersey. Palisades Park in, in the 1960s. Beautiful park. Amusement park. Coney Island was a really nice one. Then there was one upstate. We rode a roller coaster. Man, my cousin, female cousin of mine. Lola, that was her first time. Two ooh, going oh, you know how they have that the chains that pull 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 the car up. So she said to me, she was horrified. I don't know how I talked it to come on, it's okay. It is it's not a really big drop. <laughs> we we go you had that noise and I'm sitting in there and all they had at the time they didn't have they just had the bar over the over the over your waist waist level but we were small so we were young we were small we was about 5'4 so Lola sitting next to me I don't know why I got in this car I said come on Lola so we're going up going up all of a sudden, we're at the very top, and it started to come down, and she sees the drop. That girl almost wanted to get off right there. Ah, I'm getting off, I'm getting off. And I had to grab her down, man. She had panic. All of a sudden, that, that roller coaster said, <laughs> That girl was screaming. I mean, high pitch, high pitch into my ear, looking at me like, ah. <laughs> and I'm grabbing onto her, and I'm getting banged around because you're supposed to sit like this. I'm getting banged around from holding down to her, man. 
It was the worst ride. That girl, that girl was livid, scared. When we got out, that man said, "You, you, you can't ride this ride no more." No, you. He was watching what was happening up there. He says, "Girl, you gave me a heart attack thinking you want to jump out." When I got out, she started pounding on me. Pounding on me. Uh, you didn't tell me it was gonna be like that. I said I told you it was gonna it was gonna drop. Yeah, but it's crazy. Oh my god, oh my god. Right? So we were in the park for two hours and for about half an hour, that's what she was talking about. How scared to death she was of riding this roller coaster. And uh, you know why it was so funny? Two hours later, we were right about to leave. She comes running with this other girl, looks at me and goes, I'm gonna get on the roller coaster. <laughs> I wanna get after going whatever. She drove me crazy, blaming me. You go figure women. Figure women now, I don't know. Is a yes a yes and a no a no? I don't know. I can't figure these women out. It, I said, oh, you're going to be complicated, girl. When you grow up, well, she was complicated. What's going on? Some cats in my wife's feet are lining up outside because my wife decided she's a cat lover since we can't have cats and dogs. Look at him, look at him, look at him. Look, what you guys looking at? There are cats out there. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Huh? Leave them alone, guys. <laughs> so, she feeds them. The cats know exactly when my wife is coming home. She's coming home from the special stop buy a couple of things or two for morning breakfast I'm just having this coffee this morning and once she gets here the cats are lined up for her food I say you see you see what you done the dogs are barking more than ever oh but I love cats so you know what I let her do it that she really loves cats and she's always wanted a cat we had a cat before before we had a dog so I let her do it. Now, the interesting thing about these cats, once she's about to leave, they know that they know her schedule. So these cats are lined up, like Alley Cat, like Tom Cat, the cartoon Tom Cat, and they start. Oh, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I said, what? I said they ate, so they can't be hungry. They were they were communicating. So I, I said to my wife, Wanda, I think they say bye. She goes, no. I said, look at them. They're standing there every night. Wow. My wife leaves about for the night shift, which is like 1130. And they're, wow. wow. <laughs> but then I'm just going to come out and record them. So, yeah, so this is interesting. This is very every morning. Listen to it. Every morning, but you know it's so great to hear them in the morning saying, "You got some roosters that come around." So I sit here, you know. Yeah, you know. After a while, when you sit and you get your pipe, and you start reminiscing. When you reminiscent, just think of all the good times you had growing up. You've had to have some good times. <laughs> think about all the good times, all the silly stuff that you did. Like I saw a real, uh, uh, Little Rascal cartoon <laughs> where the rascals, Little Rascals are building a cart. They're building a cart. You could build go kart. It should be a big competition, go kart competition. You have to take the milk crates, the milk crates, and put uh, skates 
long beam, we put skates on both sides, and, and we try to find a hill and go down the hill, make our chassis seats, not for nothing. I, I was, I guess how I became good um, <laughs> with hammer and nails, you know, hammer and nails. It got to the point when I was like 13 years old, I could take a, a nice piece of um, I think plywood, I forgot, that they used, and with three strikes and a nice hammer, you know, I could hammer that into that piece of wood. So one day we were playing at, by the boardwalk, and they had like a fair, country fair, and one of the the, the areas was nail nail that nail uh that that nail into that wood, and you win a prize. I wanted a <laughs> I wanted that that teddy bear for my mom. So I had to pay a dollar. Pay a dollar, you get a huge teddy bear about my size. I, and I'll see grown men go up there, couldn't do it. So I decided, he, he says, you sure, you sure you could do this? He says, I'm going to try, sir. You know, it was always sir with me. So I stood there and I looked at that. I said, I've been doing this for a long time, doing my go karts. I did a, a house tree, a tree house. You know, sounds really good. One stroke, man. I hit that thing so hard. I hit that thing so hard. I knocked the table. It was a folding table he had. I said, why are you going to use a folding table? He said, he never thought. It. Because when you hit it, the folding table gives way. Bounce up. So you can't really get a good solid hit. Man, I hit that so hard. I drove the nail into that beam <laughs> at the same time that table fell apart. And he was like, oh no. And people were stand by him. They were watching me. I said, wow. I mean, real hard. I thought I was John Henry or something. I hit that thing and boom, boom, boom. Fell to the floor. And the man says, what the heck did you do, kid? They used to call him Captain because he was a Captain Sailor's cap. I think he. I think he did have a, a not a yacht, but a, some boat go fish to take people uh, fishing off the uh, Long Island Sound. So when he saw that, he looked at me so angry, and he went to pick up. He went to pick up uh, the the piece of plywood, and some other people helped him with the table. And when he picked up the plywood, he looked at Dev. That thing went. That nail went in about two me two millimeters into that wood. I hit that thing so hard, wood, and I think I broke. I'm not sure. I didn't say nothing, but you know, it was one of these hammers that you could see the end was was the wood part, the head. I looked at that. I had split the hammer too, man. I hit that thing so hard. <laughs> oh, that's my story. The random, it was random thoughts this morning, man. You hear the chicken? Chickens are coming around now. I'll be there soon. We're going to have to buy a farm, man. That's what you need to get a farm. And have all kind of animals out there. I said, we better hurry up if we're going to do that. There's a lot of good land here. You better hope we're gonna do that, cause I'm not getting young, and I ain't going after no, no chickens. <laughs> no, that's it. The other pipe man, pipe of the sailor man. We're a nice Savinelli. <laughs> Irish whiskey. We're Tommy Burley base. Some Virginia. And it has Tariq in it. I haven't seen Tariq in a long time. Okay, guys. Well, I'm out. See the other pipe of mess standing up. Remember, whatever you can't finish today, you always got tomorrow. God bless.
Hi, Bruno. Say hi, Bruno. I got a mop now.